All right, what we're here to do today is a pre-trip inspection on a Class A tractor trailer. What you want to do is get yourself a pattern or some type of rhythm to go through this vehicle. You want to let one part lead you to the next so you don't overlook or skip something. Uh, I work high to low, I'll work the middle out. And you also want to do components separately. If you're working on the suspension system, then don't start talking about the brake system. Finish your suspension system and then move on to another system. Okay, so as we start, we want to approach the vehicle and look up underneath. We just want to look for any puddles, anything dripping. That'd be an indicator that you have fluids leaking. Up high, we have the clearance lights up top. Make sure none are missing. They're properly mounted. They are secured to the truck. There's no signs of damage. They are clean and they are the proper color of amber. Coming down, we'll just grab the windshield. From here, I can see the windshield has no damage, no cracks, no chips. It's clean. There's no stickers or obstructions blocking the view through there. You have the wiper arms. You want to check the arms themselves to make sure they're secured to the tractor. They're not bent or damaged. The blades, you want to check them. Make sure they're secured to the arm properly. The blades aren't dry rotted, split, or missing. You'll see when you get inside later whether or not they work properly and your fluid will flow. While you're out here before you pop your hood, go ahead and grab all the mirrors that are on your vehicle. Make sure they're mounted properly and secured to the vehicle. Make sure the arms and the braces that support them are not bent or cracked. Make sure the mirrors themselves are secured to the bracket. They're clean and no damage on the mirrors. Do that for all your mirrors on the vehicle. That would include the ones on your doors. Now you want to do your lighting assemblies. This assembly contains all the lights that you have up here. You have high and low beams. Over here where it's amber, you have turn signals, running lights, four-way flashers, and this also doubles as a reflector. So make sure this is properly mounted and secured. There's no signs of damage. This should be clear where the headlights are. You can see it's starting to fog a little bit, so you'd want to maybe get that checked out. Right here is amber because that's where all the turn signals, four-way flashers, and running lights are. So now we'll pop the hood. When you pop your hood, brace yourself. Get a good pull. Pull with your arms and legs. Try not to pull with your back. These hoods are heavy. And there's a strap that holds this hood up. Straps and stuff. Make sure that strap might not be secured. So prepare yourself in case this hood is not strapped down because it will push you to the ground. All right, I felt the strap grab. Now I'm going to come over to this side and just do all the unique items on the engine compartment on this side. And then I'll complete the exam down the driver's side. But over here as I walk up, I just want to check all the hoses that are visible to me. All the hoses that I can see. Make sure all the clamps are on tight. Make sure they're not dry rotted, crack. Most importantly, nothing's leaking over here. So here's the coolant reservoir. It's where you'd put the coolant if it was low. Check the tank. Make sure it's securely fastened to the vehicle. Make sure the tank is not cracked or damaged. Check the hoses that run in and out of the tank. Make sure they're secure. The clamps are on tight. Hoses are flexible, not dry rotted. Nothing's leaking. Check the caps. This one has two caps. So check the caps. Make sure they're on tight. Make sure they're secured. No signs that they've been leaking there. And most importantly, make sure you have the proper level of coolant before you crank the vehicle up. It needs to be between the minimum and maximum line. You would like it at the max line. Okay, so now we're going to grab our alternator. I want to make sure that this alternator is securely fastened to the vehicle. I can see that it is. See the nuts and bolts. Make sure this alternator has no damage or cracks in it. Make sure the lines that are attached to the alternator, the wires, Make sure they're attached securely. Make sure them lines are not dry rotted or frayed. No bare wires showing. Nobody's made illegal repairs such as electrical tape after twisting the wires back together. Now you're gonna have to identify whether or not it's a belt or gear driven item. This is a belt driven alternator. So I need to check this belt. Make sure it's not ripped, cut, or torn. I need to make sure when I press on it, it has proper tension of a half inch to three quarters. Right up underneath it, right here, I have a water pump. 
If you can't find your water pump on the vehicle you're looking for, follow the hoses that come out of the radiator. Where they go to and hook up into the engine is going to be your water pump. The hose runs right up, here's the radiator. The hose is connected right here at the bottom. Runs right up here. Comes in right here to here to the back side of this water pump that is belt driven. So this water pump is securely fastened to the vehicle. It is not cracked or damaged and it's definitely not leaking. All the hoses that are attached to it are securely attached. They're not damaged, they're not leaking. The belt that drives the water pump is not dry rotted, cracked, or frayed. It has proper tension of a half inch to three quarters when pressed on. This belt here for the alternator is a serpentine belt. I had to check it independently because the belt that runs the water pump is not a serpentine, it's its own belt. Okay, might as well grab the exhaust while I'm right here. Really starts on the back side of the turbo where the rust starts. You know you're at the exhaust part. This is all the intake. When it gets rusty, you're on the exhaust because that metal's been getting hot, so that's why it's rusted. So check all your clamps. Make sure they're on tight and secure. The piping that you can see, make sure it's not dented or damaged and there is no leaks. You could tell if there was a leak, you would have a black soot trail wherever there might be a leak or a pinhole. I need to continue that exhaust all the way down. I can follow it down right here and it gets me back to this splash guard pretty much. So from there up, I would check it. Make sure all the straps and brackets that support it to the vehicle are present and secure. Make sure none of the piping is damaged or dented and there's no leaks, no soot trails indicating otherwise. Finish that exhaust out. Okay, the exhaust pipe runs into my particulate filter, diesel particulate filter. So check the piping there for everything you did up front. Make sure that clamp's on tight and secure. Filter. And we made sure that clamp was on tight and the piping was not damaged or leaking. Soot trails indicate that. Now I want to check, I have to check this filter. Make sure the brackets that support it to the vehicle are present and secure, not missing any hardware. Make sure the strut clamps or straps, whatever you want to call them, are on tight and secure, no damage. The tank itself is not dented, cracked, no damage. Again, you would see soot trails if it was leaking. This one has twin particulate filters. There's two of them. This one's really the particulate filter. Now, out of the top of this one, on this end that we can't see, the pipe runs out of the particulate filter, goes over through the frame, and down right here to what you would call a muffler, like you'd have on your car. Um, yeah, I think, the, yeah, right here. See, the piping would come out of this one right back here, run up, over. You see it running over right there, comes into the top on this side, and goes through the muffler, and out the stack right there. It's not really a stack, it's just an exhaust pipe. It's not a smoke stack, it doesn't go up the back side of your truck. But check all of that, make sure all the brackets and straps and clamps are tight and secure. None of the metal's damaged, no soot trails indicating any leaks. Just remember you're required to check your exhaust system from the manifold or the turbo until it ends. Whether it ends at a muffler style like you have on your car to the ground like this one does or what we usually see on the older trucks, the old smokestacks, which this one doesn't have. But you got to check it from one end to the other. All right, so that's everything on this side of the vehicle that we need to check for the engine compartment. So now we're on the driver's side. Again, we're going to check all the hoses that are visible to us. Any hoses, any clamps, got a lot of hoses here running through. Make sure they're all tight and secure. All the clamps are on tight. None of the piping or tubing or hoses are dry rotted right or split. Nothing's leaking. Okay, so I want to check my engine oil. I want to make sure the stick is secured to the vehicle, to the engine. Make sure the stick, the cap, can fit on tight and snug. What I'd want to do is take this off. I can go ahead and do it. Wipe it clean, because you're not going to get a true reading if you don't. Reinsert it, pull it back out, and make sure it has adequate fluid. I know if it has adequate fluid, right here. I have an ad line and a full line. 
As long as it's between the add and the full, I don't need to put any oil in it. When it gets to the add mark, put one gallon in it. Don't put anything in it until it's at the add. All right, power steering reservoir. It's where the fluid's contained. This one has a sight glass, but you can't really see the fluid. So I'd want to make sure this was on tight and secure, not damaged or leaking. See this strap? Make sure it's on tight. Make sure the hoses coming out of it are tight and secure, clamps on tight, no damage to your hoses, no leaks. You'd have to take this one off, same thing, dipstick. And you just take this off, wipe it clean, reinsert it, pull it back out, make sure it's between the add and the full mark. Right here is the air compressor. This is what makes your air for your brakes, your seats, your wipers, a lot of things. This is your air compressor. Hook to the back of it. You might need to come around over here. Hook to the back of this air compressor. See this power steering reservoir? See this hose? Follow it. See how it takes us to this piece of metal right here? That's hooked to the back part of our air compressor. This is the power steering pump. And this is the air compressor. Both of these items are running off the same gear. They're gear driven. I need to check them to make sure that the gears work properly when we crank the thing up. Everything's working. Make sure that they're both secured. Make sure there is no damage, cracks. Nothing is leaking on both of them items, your air compressor and your power steering pump, they're running off the same gear. This is the gear box that's basically running the housing that's running your air compressor. And then right there is your power steering pump. They're all running off the same gear. Okay. This is your washer fluid reservoir. Before you go on the road, locate it. They're in all different locations on different trucks. So just locate it, make sure you have sufficient amount of fluid in there for the day, or whatever you think you might need that day. Just don't go down the road empty. All right, so now we need to check the steering because we're, we're done basically with the engine. So now we're gonna check the steering. I wanna check the steering shaft, column, whatever you wanna call it. Make sure it's not bent or cracked, right? See how I got, it's got play in it? That's not excessive, that's like a half inch. You could have up to two inches on this, probably with this steering wheel here, that, that's good. Now you got universal joints at each end. You can see these, these have a dust cover. So you really need to check them and make sure they're secured, they're properly greased. There's no shiny metal indicating they've been moving around, starting to wear out. Check them at both ends. This is your steering gear box. This is what makes it easy to turn the steering wheel where you don't have to have a 30 inch steering wheel like back in the day. This is the steering gear box. Look, it's securely mounted. Check the nuts and bolts that secure it to the vehicle. Check the box itself. Make sure it's not cracked or damaged. Nothing's leaking out of it. So we have hoses connected to it to pump the fluid to the gears. Make sure them hoses are secured at each end. Make sure they're not dry right or they're split. Make sure they don't leak. Right here, you need to check your steering linkage from the box to the wheel, from the wheel to the wheel. So I have a pitman arm a drag link. I call it an upper control arm. Some call it a steering knuckle or steering arm. That's going to be connected right here underneath the axle to the lower steer arm. And that's going to be connected to the tie rod. This ties both your tires together so you're steering both of them at the same time. I want to check all that metal to make sure it's not bent, twisted, or cracked. This one I can tell has a factory bend in it. I'd be looking for something not normal, irregular. I want to make sure that they're securely fastened at their connections. Castle nuts and cotter keys hold these on so that nut can't back off on you. And at each connection, I have ball joints. These are covered up with dust covers, but then ball joints need to be checked to make sure they're not loose or worn. And make sure, you see the grease fitting here at each connection? Make sure they're properly greased at each connection. There's a lot going on there. It kind of works like your elbows and your shoulders and everything. Okay, now we want to check our suspension. So I'm done with the steering. I still have brakes to do, but I'm going to go ahead and keep them in systems. I'm going to do my suspension system right now. I have a spring hanger, mount, bracket, whatever you want to call it. It's what supports the springs to the frame of the vehicle. Check the front and rear spring mounts to make sure they're securely mounted. 
They're not missing any hardware. They are not bent, twisted, or cracked. Now right here we have our springs. Make sure they're secured properly in their mounts and their hangers. Where they're secured, you have metal springs with a metal mount with a metal nut and bolt running through it. There better be a rubber bushing at each one of these connections to keep it from wearing out the metals. Make sure that rubber bushing is not worn or loose. The springs themselves are properly aligned. They haven't shifted. They're not bent or cracked. None are missing. All of this is supported to this axle with these two U-bolts. I wanna make sure these U-bolts are not bent, twisted, or cracked. And on the bottom, if I was to check it, each one of them has a nut and a washer. Make sure they're secure. Here's a shock absorber. Check the shock mount at the top here to the frame. Check the mount down here at the saddle to the axle. Make sure the mounts are secured, not missing hardware. They're not bent or cracked. Check the shock itself. Make sure it's secured in its mounts. Where it's secured, again, you got metal to metal. You better have a rubber bushing in here. Make sure the bushings are not worn or loose. The shock is not dented, no damage, and it doesn't leak. Now we want to check our brakes, because that's all of the suspension. Well, I could check this here. This is going to, if you hit a bump or a pothole, this here with this bracket, with this rubber bumper on it, is going to keep this axle from coming up too high. If it came up too high, this, the tire, it could all get into your fender and stuff. So you don't really have to check this on the test, but you would want to make sure this was here secured, not damaged. The rubber boot was on tight, not damaged. <clears throat> now the braking system. Start at one end and work your way to the other. I'm going to check my brake hoses. I need to check the fittings since they're metal at each end. Make sure they're secured. No signs of damage. I don't hear any leaks. The hose itself is rubber. Make sure it's not dry rotted, cracked, split. It's flexible and there's no audible leaks out of it. My brake chamber is securely mounted to this bracket. Okay. The chamber itself is not dented or cracked. Has a band that holds this together. It's almost like two lids. They'll take these two lids off, put them together, and you put this band on here and that holds it together. Very important that this is present and secure. And you don't hear any leaks either. Now the push rod, might want to trade places here. The push rod comes out of the chamber. It's connected to the slack adjuster with a clevis pin and a cotter key to keep that pin from coming out. It's called a clevis pin because this piece here where it connects is the clevis of the push rod. Neither one of them are bent, twisted, or cracked. This is a single chamber, so I don't have to release the brakes. There's no parking brake in here. So I don't have to release the brakes to pull on a single brake chamber, a service brake chamber, to pull on my slack adjuster to make sure this rod doesn't travel more than one inch. A lot of times you can get a screwdriver, put it in here, and just, just tug on it like that, see if you get more than an inch of play. If you get more than an inch of play, call the mechanics, something's wrong, it needs to be adjusted. <clears throat> now I wanna check my brake drum right here. Make sure the drum is not damaged or cracked. I don't see any bluing to indicate that it was overheating. I can rub my finger along it to find out if it's smooth. Shouldn't be, it should be smooth. There's no oil or grease caught up in here. That oil or grease would come from my inner hub seal, my axle seal. So make sure that's one way to check it's not leaking, you don't have oil in here. Now I need to check the brake shoes, the linings, the pads, whatever you want to call them. Make sure they're securely mounted. They're not damaged. They're at least a quarter of an inch thick and there's no oil or grease on them. Now I'm gonna check my rims. I wanna check the inside and the outside of my rim. I wanna make sure and look for damage, bends and cracks along the bead where the tire beads up to the rim, no damage. No cracks along the rim surface, no illegal welds. You're not allowed to weld these back together. Tire, I wanna check all sides. So I'm gonna check the inside, the outside, and the tops of these tires to make sure there's no abrasions, bubbles, cuts, dry rot. Make sure the tread is wearing smooth across, it's evenly worn. Make sure you have at least 4 32 tread depth on a steer tire. 
they will measure that on the road at the thinnest layer you have. They're not going to find the thickest amount you have to measure. They will go to where it is where it's worn most and measure that. So make sure that part is at least 430 seconds. Lug nuts. Make sure none of them are missing. Make sure they're all secured. The only way you can really tell they're secure without putting a torque wrench on it is you don't see any rust trails if you had a steel wheel. Since this one aluminum, we would have an oxidized white trail right here if they were loose. Or you would see shiny metal around the holes where they've been moving around. Here's your hub axle seal. Check to make sure all the hardware that supports it to the axle is present and secure. Check the casing to make sure it's not cracked or damaged. Make sure it's not leaking. You'd see it puddled up down here or all splattered around in here. Since you have a sight glass on this one, make sure you have adequate fluid in it. If you don't, you pop this cap off and put the fluid in here until you get it to the line. Now on this tire as well, I need to check the valve stem. I need to make sure that it's metal. It's present for sure. It's not bent or damaged and it should have a cap. And I would check the tire pressure in this tire with a tire gauge and make sure it was at manufacturer specifications. They list it on the tire right in here. All right, I'm just going to continue down the vehicle. As I come to lights or reflectors, I'll need to talk about them. This is a light, so I'm going to make sure it's securely mounted. It's not damaged. It's clean, and it's amber in color. I have steps going up to my door. Make sure the steps are secured with all the hardware. If you have something on here like this, make sure it's secured as well or it's not going to trip you up, have you fall. Make sure the steps themselves are not bent or cracked. There's no debris, any oil or grease up there to get tangled up in, trip you up. The door. I need to just make sure it has no damage overall to it. I don't see any. I have outside hinges. Make sure I don't see any damage to them hinges. You can see the rivets that are holding the hinges on there. They look in good shape, secured, not damaged. None of the paint's cracking or if they've been moving or something. I need to know that this door opens properly. It does. I'll check the inner hinges. They're all secured. No damage that I can see. My weather stripping. Need to make sure it's all present, secure, intact. No damage. When we get inside, make sure your windows go up and down. These are electric windows. Just make sure they go up and down. Make sure the door closes properly as well and latches properly. The mirror, we told y'all earlier to check all your mirrors, but we'll go over this one again. Check your mirrors. You see all the hardware that supports you to the vehicle? It's all present and secure, okay? The arms, braces, and brackets, they're not bent, twisted, or cracked. The mirror housing is secured to them brackets. The mirror is not damaged, it's clean. The handrail going up into my cab, make sure it's secured with all the proper hardware. It's not damaged, bent, cracked. No little ding in it right here and then that little sharp piece of metal right there that cuts you real good. So that'd be something you'd be looking for. Right here I have a DEF fuel tank, diesel exhaust fluid. This is what the fluid in here goes to that diesel particulate filter we checked earlier and burns the diesel fumes and stuff, makes it better for the environment. So we're going to check this tank to make sure it's secured to the tractor frame. Make sure the, bra the straps that secure it are present and secure. These are metal straps. This is a plastic tank. We're going to want something. This is called a vibration grommet. You see this black piece? It's a rubber grommet. It keeps this metal from wearing back and forth and cutting a hole into your tank. Make sure that's present and secure. Make sure the cap's on tight. No debris in there. Everything's secured. When we get in the cab, we need to make sure we have to have at least an eighth of a tank before we go down the road of diesel exhaust fluid. And we'll make sure that works when we get in the cab. There'll be a light and a gauge indicating that's for us. All right. While I'm up under here, I can see a lot of my frame of the tractor. So this is a good time to check the frame of your tractor. Here we go. This is the frame. Remember what you call your longitudinal frame members. We need to check them to make sure they're not bent, twisted, or cracked. Make sure there's no illegal welds or holes. This is tempered metal, so you can't go welding on it. You're going to mess with the integrity of its strength, and you can't go cutting holes in it because you want to bolt something to your truck. It messes with the integrity, so check for any of that. Now, also, you're going to have cross members. We'll probably better see them over here. Okay. 
Here's a cross member right here. So again, this is your longitudinal frame member right here. Well, what's going to keep these two frame members square and parallel with each other? These cross members right here. You have several of them running across the frame all the way down. Make sure none of them are missing. Make sure the hardware that supports them to the vehicle is present and secure. See the nuts and bolts. Make sure they're not bent, twisted, or cracked. Our fuel tank right here. Again, it's held on the same way as the other tank, the DEF tank is. Check the brackets that support this tank to the frame. Make sure all the hardware is present and secure. Check the brackets. Make sure they're not bent or cracked. Check your straps. Make sure they're secured in the bracket. You got a bolt running through here with a nut on it. Make sure that nut's secured right here or else it's just going to come off. Do it on both sides. Check the strap for damage. Again, I can see it inside. It doesn't flip over like the tank over here, the straps that had that rubber vibration grommet. But inside, it does have a rubber vibration grommet. Looks like this might have been cut off to have this tank made shinier and look better. But as long as that has some type of, of friction material in there to keep metal from rubbing metal, you're okay, you're good. Check the cap. Make sure the cap's on tight. Make sure the cap doesn't leak. Make sure the tank is not dented or damaged, and it doesn't leak either. Right up top here, we have crossover lines. Goes from one tank to the next, so when you're running your truck, it takes the fuel down out of both tanks kind of at the same time to keep your weight good and balanced. Make sure that crossover line's secured, not damaged. You don't see any leaks on that line. Right here, we have a door, storage container area. So same thing with any door. Look for damage overall. Make sure it opens properly. Make sure the hinges are secured with no damage. Make sure it has the weather stripping so the water don't get in there and ruin whatever you're storing. As a stop, make sure that cable's tight and secure. And we would make sure it closed and latched properly too. But I want to check and make sure I have three red reflective triangles. Make sure they're secured in the vehicle. Make sure they're not damaged. Okay. Make sure you can actually put them together. They work. Yep, latches properly. Right here we have a multifunction light, running light, turn signal, four-way flasher. It's properly mounted and secured. It's not damaged. It's clean. It's amber in color. I'm going to check the steps going up to my catwalk. And I'm going to check my catwalk as well. Make sure all the hardware that supports it to the vehicle it's present and secure. Make sure none of this metal is bent, twisted, or cracked. There is no debris up here that would trip me up or cause me to slip. All right, so we might as well check the airlines. Where they attach, these are the airlines that feed your trailer. Check the airline connection, both of them. Make sure it's secured, not damaged, and doesn't leak. Now check the hoses themselves. First of all, make sure they're suspended properly off the vehicle. They shouldn't be dragging. If they drag here, they're going to get chafed and wear out. Make sure they're not pinched or crimped or, any, or tangled up. Make sure there's no repairs been done to them. Make sure there's no leaks. Your electrical plug, make sure that... Ah! Okay. Your electrical plug... Make sure there's no debris in any of these holes where the pins are going to go into. Over here, we have the pins. This is what makes all your lights work, your ABS, everything. Okay, So make sure all them prongs or pins are present and secure, not bent, and you want them to be greased. Then when I plug this in, i got to make sure it's seated properly. And then, see how it has a lip, and this has a lip. It's locked in place. Now it can't pull out because that lip falls over that lip. Now the electrical line itself, again, it's not dragging. There's no bare wire showing, no insulation, no illegal repairs to this line. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to check the fitting for my trailer glad hand. All right. I hope they pulled them brakes. All right. Check this glad hand. Make sure the fitting's secured, not damaged, and doesn't leak. Make sure your rubber grommet 
It's present and secure. It's not missing any pieces or folded over. Now I want to check the connection here from my hose to my glad hand. Make sure it's secured, not damaged. It doesn't leak. Check the glad hand itself. Check the grommet, dry rock cracks. Check it for the same thing we checked that one for. It's round, it's not folded over. Now when I put these together, I need to make sure they're seated properly. This hole needs to line up with that hole so the air can flow through. So I'll hold it at a 90 degree angle, stack it like I'm stacking two quarters on top of each other. I'm going to put that finger there to manipulate it. Don't leave your fingers up here, you're going to pinch yourself. You pull it down, and this finger has to push up to kind of keep you centered on this sometimes. Make sure it's locked in place. Check the electrical plug for the same thing you did down here. You know, it has a female side and a male side. Make sure the female side's not clogged up, the male prongs not bent or damaged and greased. Seated properly and it locks in place. All right, so we might as well just do this axle right here. So I'm gonna do the suspension system first because my brakes will lead me to my tires and that gets me out. So I'm trying to work my way out of the vehicle. So the suspension system on this vehicle. It really doesn't have a rear spring mount like the front did. It turns into the airbag support. So this front spring mount, look at all the hardware supporting it to the vehicle. It's present and secure. The mount itself is not bent or cracked. Now here, let's see if I can, might be better if we do this one. You won't have that splash guard in your way. Okay, this mount's identical to the one we just checked up there, but we needed a better view of this. Check your spring. Make sure your spring is not bent, twisted, or cracked. See where it's connected at each end? Again, that's that metal to metal again. I need to make sure I have a secured connection, but also need to make sure that the bushing, the rubber bushing at each end here, is not worn or loose. Now this is a torque rod. This keeps the axle from moving forward or backwards. This gives you your suspension up and down. This bar here, this rod, it's round, so I call it a torque rod. It keeps your axle from moving forward or backwards on you. I'll make sure it's secured at the hanger and it will be secured at the axle as well in here. Make sure it's not bent, twisted, or cracked. It has the same connection basically as your spring. You got metal to metal. So there better be a rubber bushing at each connection and make sure that bushing's not worn or loose. Okay, right inside of here, you might be able to get into this one better, Clay. All right. Now you can see torque rod, dog bone, we talked about it back here, but again, this rod, this bar, is keeping this axle from going forward or backwards on you. See how it's secured with a nut and bolt? Check that bushing. Now right here, securing all this stuff to the axle are two U-bolts. They're not bent, twisted, or cracked, and if you looked on the bottom, you'd have a nut and a washer on each one. Make sure they're secured. Right here is an airbag, part of your suspension. Make sure that airbag is not dented, or not dented. It's not dry rotted or cracked or split. It doesn't leak. Make sure it's secured to its mounts at the top and at the bottom. Make sure the mounts are secured at the top and bottom to the vehicle with nuts and bolts, and they're not bent, twisted, or cracked. The shock, check it the same as we did up front. Check the shock mounts at the top and bottom. They're secured, not missing any hardware. They're not bent, twisted, or cracked. The shock, make sure it's secured in its mounts at the top and bottom. Again, it's secured with a nut and bolt. So you better check to make sure you have a rubber bushing that's not worn or loose at each connection. The shock itself is not dented and it doesn't leak. All right, this is a dual, we'll go to the brakes now. All right, what we wanna do now is check our braking system on this rear drive axle, axle number three. It's a dual chamber. It's not like the front axle. This has a parking brake and a service brake built into it. This is one that's got your spring inside of it. So it's going to have two air lines going to it. I want to check both of them air lines at each end to make sure the metal fittings are secured, not damaged, and don't leak. Now I need to check the rubber hoses of my air lines, both of them. Make sure they're not dry rotted or split, and there's no leaks there either. Now the brake chamber itself. Make sure it's securely mounted to its bracket. Make sure it is not dented or cracked. Make sure it does not leak. And you see how it has these bands that hold it together like a sandwich? Make sure they're present and secure. Now, I've got a push rod 
I'm gonna have to get under there. Okay, right here, we have our push rod coming out of the chamber. So basically, when you hit the brakes, air goes into them lines, goes into this chamber, and pushes this rod out, which pushes your slack adjuster this way, which rolls your S cam that you read about to get your permit, and pushes your shoes apart into contact with your drum. That's how you stop. Okay, so make sure this rod right here is not bent, twisted, or cracked. Make sure it's secured at its clevis with a clevis pin and a cotter key to keep that pin from backing out. Make sure the slack adjuster is secured. Make sure neither one of these, the rod or the slack adjuster, are bent, twisted, or cracked. Now this one's unique. Right now these brakes are fully engaged because the spring brake, is, the parking brake is on. So the rod's already out. The only way I can pull on this one to check the free play in the slack adjuster is to release the parking brakes on the vehicle. Then this rod would go back in and then I'd be able to pull on it and see if there was more than an inch of slack. So with the brakes released, if I pull on the slack adjuster, the rod should not travel more than one inch. Now I'm gonna check my brake drum. Make sure the brake drum, it's not dented or cracked. Where I can get my finger in there, make sure it's smooth. It's been braking properly. And where I can see it, make sure it's not blue, no bluing. That'd be an indicator it's been overheating or spider cracking. <clears throat> make sure there's no oil or grease on the drum. The brake lining or the shoe, make sure it's securely mounted, no chunks missing out of it. It's at least a quarter of an inch thick, and there's no oil or grease on it either. Now we can get out of here. Ah. Okay. So we just checked our braking system. So now we're back out here because we need to check our rims, all sides of both of these rims. So I want to check the inside, the outside, the inside, and the outside of both of these rims. Same thing. Damage, bends, cracks along the bead. Any cracks or damage or bends in here or on the face. No illegal welding. Do that on all the rims. Now, if you'll get right here, we have what's called bud spacing between these two rims. These rims create their own space so the tires don't touch. Make sure where these rims meet each other, you have no daylight. They are flush. Make sure your tires are not touching. Make sure you have no debris caught up in here. Rocks, two by four, soda cans, whatever. Right out here, check our lug nuts, the same as we do all of them. Make sure none are missing. Make sure they're all secured. You can tell they're secured. Again, if it was a metal rim, you're gonna see a rust trail. If it's this aluminum rim, you're gonna see white oxidized trail. Actually, we have some, you might be able to see this on the video. You can see where water has ran here a while back and created that white oxidized line. You would see that in all these, you know, a bunch of locations coming off that lug nut and you'd know it was loose. Axle seal, all the hardware is present and secure. It's not damaged or cracked. Nothing's leaking. I don't see it puddled up down here. All sides of both of these tires, inside, outside, inside, outside, and tops of both of these tires have no abrasions, bruises, cuts, dry rotting, Make sure they're wearing evenly across the top. Make sure you have at least two thirty seconds of an inch tread depth on these. Check both your valve stems. You have two, one for each tire. Make sure they're present, they're secured, they're not bent or damaged. They have caps. And you would check the pressure in both these tires with a tire gauge to make sure they were at manufacturer specifications. 110 PSI in this tire here. Okay. Right here we have a splash guard. So we need to check the bracket that supports the splash guard. Make sure it's secured to the tractor frame. These are the kind that are made to give a little bit. Just, just give it a good go, make sure it's working properly. Now, make sure it's not bent or cracked. These nuts and bolts hold the splash guard to the bracket, make sure they're present and secure. Make sure the splash guard's not dragging the ground, it's at least four inches off the ground. It's not split or torn. See how we have DOT reflective tape here? Make sure it's affixed to the vehicle securely. It's not peeling off and it's clean and visible. Back here we have some reflectors. So remember, if I run across a light or a reflector on this vehicle, I've, I've got to talk about it. So I have two red reflectives here, reflectors. They're secured to the vehicle properly. They're not damaged and they're clean. 
Now I need to talk about my multifunction lights that are back here. These are running lights, or tail lights, some people call them, four-way flashers, turn signals, and brake lights. The assembly is securely mounted. It's not damaged. It's clean. They're the proper color of red. So now that we basically finished the tractor, we'll complete our coupling, which gets us to our trailer, and we'll finish our trailer off. So we've already done our airlines and electrical line for our coupling. Now we want to go ahead and finish the coupling off. So I want to check the apron. This flat metal piece here, that's the apron of your trailer. You can see where it's bolted on. Make sure all the bolts are present and secure. Make sure that flat piece of metal is not bent or cracked or caved in. You get a real heavy load and hit, say, a big hole. You could imagine how this skid plate right here could push a dent into the bottom of this apron. So check for that. Now, make sure there's no daylight between the apron and the skid plate. If you have daylight between these two, something's wrong with your connection. The skid plate itself is secured to this platform right here. This piece that goes up like that, that's your platform. You can see how the skid plate is secured to the platform with a pivot pin. This allows that skid plate to pivot. And inside of there, it has a cotter key that keeps that pin from backing out. And you have this safety bolt that's not going to let it back out either. <clears throat> your platform check it make sure it's not bent twisted or cracked this platform is bolted and secured to this angle bar right here this is angle bar this platform is secured and bolted to the angle bar with a solid attachment they're not loose none are missing the angle bar itself see all the nuts and bolts that hold it to the frame they're all present and secure and that angle bar is not bent twisted or cracked this skid plate could be moved it's a, it's not a manual or self-adjusting but the angle bar has holes in it for where these bolts can line up with so if they needed to move this forward looks like they have it all the way back on this one this one could move forward you just unbolt it move it forward and bolt it back down here's your release arm so you can drop your trailer make sure that release arm you can see where it connects in there to an actuator Make sure you have a good securement at the actuator and there's a carter pin in there to keep it from pulling out. Make sure this arm's not bent or cracked. And since we're hooked to a trailer, this needs to be fully engaged in the locked position, and it is. Now, if we were to go up under here, <clears throat> we need to look up into the skid plate area, into that V area right there. You can see the locking jaws from the skid plate, how they're securing the trailer to the tractor with the kingpin. So the locking jaws are wrapped around the shank of the kingpin holding it together. The locking jaws are properly greased and they're not bent, twisted, or cracked. The kingpin that's connected to my trailer apron is securely fastened and that kingpin is not bent, twisted, or cracked either. And I would make sure, since remember you have a a fifth wheel that can be moved if they unbolted it and moved it forward or backwards on you. Make sure you have proper clearance between the tractor and your landing gear when you go to make turns. Okay. First thing really going to hit when you go to make a turn would be this mud flap hitting this brace right here if you didn't have proper clearance. So make sure you have proper clearance before you get on the road at that location and as well as right here. Rule of thumb is at least three feet and we got we have plenty here. Okay, so now we want to work on our trailer. Here we have a marker clearance light. Make sure it's properly mounted and secured. It's not damaged, it's clean, it's amber in color. We have DOT reflective tape all the way down the side of this trailer. Make sure it's attached securely. Make sure it's not peeling off. It's clean and it's visible. See your strap rails right here where you tie everything down. Since everything's tied down to this, it might be a good idea to make sure this is securely fastened to the trailer frame. It's fastened with welds. Just check all your welds. Make sure they're not cracked or damaged. Check all the metal. Make sure it's not bent, cracked, or damaged in any way. Everything's supported and held here with this. Make sure the landing gear legs are fully raised as far as you can get them for your clearance. You'd hate to get hung up on railroad tracks because you left it down an inch. Raise them up all the way. Make sure the feet or the landing pads are secured to the legs and they're not bent or damaged. 
You want them to sit flat when they go to the ground and drop the trailer. The crank handle, make sure it's secured. You can see the nut and bolt that holds it to the crank. <clears throat> Check the handle, make sure it's not bent or cracked. If you don't have a, a place to house this, you need to, you always, no matter what, you have to, and this is fine, you have to make sure your crank handle is secured to the vehicle. It can't be just flapping around out there. Now check all the hardware that holds your landing gear to the trailer frame. Make sure all the hardware is present and secure. Make sure none of that hardware is missing. Make sure none of this metal on your braces and brackets or legs is bent, twisted, or cracked. You would also want to make sure, undo this, and make sure these legs go up and down at the same time. And this crank handle works both in high and low gear. It has two gears. You put it in high gear when you want to move fast, get it moving. Once it hits the ground, you have to put it in low gear just to be able to lift the weight up. All right, so while we're right here, how we check the frame on our tractor, we need to check the frame of our trailer. These, all the way down and up, are your longitudinal frame members. Make sure they are not bent, twisted, or cracked. No illegal holes, no illegal welds. These are easier to see than they were on the tractor. These are your cross members, are your floor joists, whatever you want to call them. It's what supports the, gives the floor strength of your trailer. Make sure they are mounted securely. These are mounted with welds. Make sure there's no damage to them welds. Make sure they're not bent, twisted, or cracked, and none of them are missing. Check your DOT tape down there too. Make sure it's affixed properly. It's clean, visible. Right here you have a marker light and it doubles as a reflector. Make sure it's properly mounted and secured, not damaged, it's clean and amber in color. As we move down, we're just checking for lights and reflectors. Here you have a multifunction light. It's a running light, a turn signal, a four-way flasher, and it doubles as a reflector. See the difference in this material? See this, this is almost clear. It's not clear because it's amber, but this is all has reflective materials in it so you know it doubles as a reflector this is securely mounted not damaged clean they're amber in color okay we'll grab this axle right here do our trailer axle all right again i like to get the suspension out of the way because that takes me to my brakes and my brakes take me to my tires and that gets me out okay so i want to check this trailer suspension arm bracket right here make sure it's bolted to the trailer frame properly and secured make sure it's not bent twisted or cracked I have to get in here this is kind of unique a little uniqueness to this okay normally right in here you'd have what is easy to identify as a leaf spring and a torque arm this is a trailer suspension arm it, it's, it's working as the same thing. It's giving you suspension, and it's also keeping this axle right here from moving forward or backwards on you because it's secured and welded to the axle itself, so it can't go anywhere. And it's bolted in right here. And you know what we need to do when we have a bolt, metal bolt and a metal brace, inside of there is a bushing. We need to make sure it's not worn or loose. So make sure all the hardware that supports this arm on is present and secure. The bushing's not worn or loose. The arm itself is not bent, twisted, or cracked. And where it's connected at the axle, it has a good connection. There's no damage to the welds. Right here, I have a shock. So I'm gonna check the shock mount at the top and the bottom. Make sure it's mounted to the vehicle securely, not missing hardware. The mounts are not bent, twisted, or cracked. Make sure the shock is secured inside its mounts. Where it's secured, again, we got metal to metal. Make sure that bushing is not worn or loose at each end. The shock itself, is not dented and doesn't leak. Now here we have an airbag. This is really rare where you get your suspension from on this trailer. The airbag is not damaged. It is secured to its brackets and it doesn't leak. The airbag mounts at the top and bottom are securely fastened. They're not missing any hardware. They are not bent, twisted, or cracked. Now this chamber is really easy to see compared to the one we were doing on the uh, drive axle. This is axle number four, first axle of your trailer. So again, I have a dual chamber here. It's a parking brake, service brake, and emergency brake. What that really means is it's an air brake and a spring brake. I'm gonna check the air hoses at each end, my metal fittings. 
to make sure they're secure, not damaged, no leaks. The hoses themselves are not dry rotted, cracked or split and they don't leak. The chamber itself is secured to its bracket. It is not dented or cracked. It does not leak. The bands that hold them together are present and secure. Now this one has a single band holding this side of the chamber together. This one's a newer style where they have crimped it together. They basically pressed it together. It's no longer clamp. But it's very important. Your spring is in here and that spring's under enough pressure to take your head off. So it'd be a good idea to make sure there's no damage along that crimping. And again, the band where it is, is present and secure. Now I want to check the push rod. This one's easy to see. You got a good view of that one? Because yeah. this is just beautiful. All right, this push rod right here, you can tell the brakes are set on this trailer. This rod is all the way out, pushing my slack adjuster, which is engaging my shoes to my drum and applying the brakes. The rod is secured inside the chamber. It is not bent, twisted, or cracked. It's secured to the slack adjuster at the clevis with a clevis pin and a cotter key. The slack adjuster is properly secured, and it's not bent, twisted, or cracked. With the brakes released, this rod would go back in, and then I would be able to pull on the slack adjuster to make sure the rod did not travel more than one inch. Again, if it travels more than one inch, you need to get with a mechanic and have it adjusted. You're not out of service, but your brakes aren't working as good as they should. I want to check the brake drum for everything I've always checked it for up there, right? Damage, cracks, bluing indicating it's overheating, spider cracking indicating it's overheating, smooth to, smoothness to make sure it's wearing properly. The brake lining or the shoe is properly mounted. It's not missing any rivets that hold the friction material to the bracket. It's not dangerously thin, it's at least a quarter of an inch, and there's no oil or grease on my drum or my lining. And that should get us out to our rims. Okay, so we just finished checking our brakes. That got us out from underneath the vehicle, basically. Now we're at our rims and tires. So again, I'm going to check all four sides of my rims. Inside, outside, inside, and outside. We're checking for damaged bends and cracks along the bead. Any cracks or illegal welds inside here. Okay. Now, again, like we did up front on the drive axle, we have bud spacings. The rims create a space for these tires so they don't touch. I need to make sure there's no daylight where these rims meet each other. They're flush. You don't want any daylight there. You don't want any debris caught up in here, and you don't want these tires touching. Maybe you got a bubble right here, and that's causing your tires to touch. That's a problem that needs to be fixed. Inside, outside, inside, outside, and tops of both of these tires have no abrasions, bubbles, or cuts. I can see they're wearing evenly. Minimum tread depth of 230 seconds on both these tires. I'll check my valve stems, make sure both are present. There's one of them for this one. Where's my other one? There it is. So they're both present. They're not bent or damaged. They both have caps. And I would check the pressure in both these tires with a tire gauge to make sure they were at manufacturer specifications. The hub seal, our axle seal, it's not missing any hardware. It's not cracked or damaged. It doesn't leak. It has a sight glass indicating to me it has the proper amount of fluid in it. And again, if you needed to add any, you just pop this red cap off and squirt it in there until you get it to the line. Put your cap back on. All right, we have a marker light here, and it doubles as a reflector. So it's securely mounted, not damaged, clean, proper color of amber. Marker light. Now that we're at the rear of the vehicle, the only thing allowed to be any color other than amber or other than red is a turn signal. Everything has to be red now. This is a marker light or a clearance light. It's properly mounted and secured. It's not damaged, it's clean, proper color of red. Back here, we have DOT reflective tape across our vehicle. Make sure it's affixed to the vehicle securely. It's not peeling off, it's clean and visible. The DOT bumper is securely fastened to the vehicle. None of the welds are damaged. None of the metal is bent or cracked. My rubber bumpers that protect my trailer are present and secure. And they start wearing out and you start noticing that they're getting almost flush or even with the metal. Get with your company and have them put some new ones on. These are still good. All right, you wanna check all these lights back here. These are your clearance lights. 
they're truly identification lights. When you have three lights together like this, it identifies the vehicle as being more than 80 inches wide. That's why they're on the front of the vehicle as well. But you can call them clearance lights. They're properly mounted and secured. They're not damaged. They're clean and they're red in color. Your tag light, it's securely mounted. It's not damaged. It's clean and clear so your tag can be red at night. Tag is securely fastened to the vehicle. Not damaged and it can be red. Okay, so you want to check all these here are your running lights, your turn signals, your four-way flashers, and your brake lights. So you want to make sure they're all properly mounted and secure. They're not damaged. They are clean, and they are all red in color. Now, once we get done with the end cab part, we will actually make sure all the lights on this vehicle all the way around it are operational. They work. Okay, so we're ready for the end cab. Okay, now we're ready to do the end cab portion. When you climb up in the vehicle, make sure you have three points of contact at all times. That way, if you slip, you don't fall. Now, right here as I climbed in, I have a fire extinguisher. I need to make sure it's securely mounted in my vehicle. Make sure it's the proper size and type. And make sure it's fully charged. The needle's in the green, indicating fully charged. And the safety pin that keeps it from engaging is present and secure. So it doesn't discharge that fluid while I'm going down the road. All right, so now we want to do what's called a safe start. So I need to make sure it's in neutral. I need to engage the clutch all the way to the firewall and turn it on. ABS light comes on and goes off. Did you see that? We'll do it again because you need to indicate to the examiner that your ABS light comes on. That way you know the bulb's not burnt out, but it needs to go off to indicate to you the ABS is working properly. ABS on, ABS off. So on the truck and trailer, they're both working properly. They both came on and went off for us. So now we'll crank it up. Ease off the clutch to guarantee neutral. Okay. So now we want to go ahead and get our gauges. The first gauge you should really look at anytime you crank up a vehicle is your oil pressure gauge. If you don't get oil pressure within three to five seconds, shut your engine down. Something's going to get hurt. So your oil pressure, make sure the needle works. It actually moves, it's not stuck in place. And you should be somewhere between 30 and 60 PSI to know it's in the proper range. Check your coolant. Your, make sure that your engine temperature, water. Now it won't be warm because you just cranked it up, but when you cranked it up, make sure it rotates so you know it's not stuck in place. And watch it and make sure it rises to its normal range. Usually somewhere between 170 and with these newer vehicles, 210. Older vehicles about 170 to 190. Right here we have a voltmeter, charges our batteries. We need to know that they're charging. So first, did the needle rotate so you know it's not just stuck there? And now, as it indicated to you since you cranked it up, that it is charging, and it has. Okay, over here, we have our fuel, diesel exhaust fluid. You need to make sure you have at least an eighth of a tank before you put that vehicle on the road. Right here's my air gauges, primary and secondary. I know they're working because the air is steady building, so the needles are moving. And it should build to a governor cutout till it purges. We'll hear it psh. And that's usually around 120 to 140. So we'll build it to that. Now, while all that's happening, I can check my horns. My city electric horn works. And my highway air horn, let's see if it works. Yes, it does. Also, while I'm waiting on that to build, I can check my indicator lights. I need to know that my indicator lights work. They're indicating to me I left my turn signal on or my four-ways on or my high beams on. So what I want to do is make sure I cut my headlights on or my high beam indicator won't work properly. High beam indicator works. Left indicator works. Right indicator works. And now... The four-way or the hazard indicators work. Now, when we were outside, we checked our wiper arms and our blades for securement and damage. Now we need to make sure that the fluid actually flows and they have proper tension to the glass. So we're going to look for what we call a working squirt. All right. Water's flowing. And looks like we have proper tension to the glass. It's cleaning the windshield. We just heard it purge. Did you hear that? It, psh, and about 130 in this truck. About 128, looks like it purges. So somewhere between 120 and 140, most of them purge. 
All right, so what I want to do is a parking brake test. I have to build it to the governor cutout, which it just did before I perform this test. So I'm going to put it in its lowest forward gear. And I need to check the parking brake on my tractor and my trailer. It doesn't matter which order I do them in. But make sure whichever one you push in, you're actually checking the parking brake on the other one. So I'm going to supply air to my tractor so I can check the parking brake of my trailer. Is this button still out? Give it a little tug, feel that? Parking brake of the trailer is holding. I want to set the brakes on my tractor and release the brakes on my trailer to make sure the tractor parking brakes are holding. So we'll give it another tug by easing up on the clutch. Yes, they are holding. Now we want to do what's called a service brake check. We're going to get rolling about five mile an hour, hit our clutch and then our brake. We want to make sure it's braking properly and it doesn't pull one way or the other. So I know it's braking properly when it's not spongy or grabby. And I know my brakes are adjusted properly when the wheel doesn't go to the left or the right. So let's supply air to both, release our brakes. We'll get going about five mile an hour. Just ease off on your clutch, give it a little fuel. Just get it going a little bit and engage the clutch and the brake. Put your hands up underneath the wheel a little bit so you can see if it moved left or right. If it moves left or right, brakes aren't adjusted properly. Okay. So now we're gonna go back to neutral. Now, before we do anything else with our brakes, we need to let that air pressure build all the way back to the governor cutout. You may not have used enough air to have your governor to have kicked in yet. So what you're gonna wanna do is pump it down. Pump your brakes down, get it down around 90. All your governors are gonna kick in somewhere around 90 and start making you more air. So just get it down and now let it build back up to the purge and then you know you won't fail this test. So when we were outside checking our doors, I told you, make sure your windows go up and down. And they do. All right, while we're waiting on that, I'm gonna check my safety belt. I need to check where it's mounted to the wall, make sure it's secured. Where it's mounted to the wall on the floor on, my, on the left side, it's secured. Where it's mounted to the floor in the seat on the right side, it's secured. The belt itself is not ripped, torn, or cut. It's adjustable and it latches and just as importantly, unlatches. My, my mirrors, while I'm sitting here waiting on the air to build, we already checked them outside for securement and damage. In here, I need to make sure they're just properly adjusted for me. I can see down both sides of my trailer, I have good adjustments. So right now all we're doing is waiting on this air to build. I can give it a little fuel to help it. Remember you got a gear driven air compressor, the faster the gears go, the quicker it makes air. Don't ever take them past 1500, around 12, 13 is enough if you're just trying to sit here and build air. We're listening for the purge, we'll go ahead and get these down. It's at 120 now. So I've seen it earlier, this one goes to about 128. It's getting close. There it was. So now, my brakes are released. They are not, my brakes are not applied. That's the first thing you want to check. You know you just heard it purge. So now return it to a low gear so you don't roll. And shut your engine off. Go ahead. See how I lose my gauges? So now I have to turn my key back on just to get my air gauges to work. Let it settle. Now I'm gonna put my foot on the brake pedal and I'm gonna hold the brake for one minute after it stabilizes. And I shouldn't lose more than four PSI in that one minute. Right now there's no air in your lines. So as soon as you mash the brake pedal, the needle's gonna move a little bit. Don't start your minute until it stabilizes. Okay, so I'm mashing the brake now. See that moved? That's cause air is traveling from the tank through the service line to all your chambers right now. So it takes air to do that. See how it just stabilized? Had you started your 60 seconds, when you first put the hit the pedal, the examiner would not have started theirs. You will not have held yours for one minute if you don't do this. So it stabilized and now I'll hold it for one minute. I'm looking and I'm listening for that leak. Really, you're not really gonna see four pounds on a gauge. So what you're really doing is listening for a leak. If you can see that needle moving, you're losing more than four PSI.
So make sure you have your windows down when you tell the examiner you're listening for leaks. It's pretty hard to listen for leaks with your windows up. It's been 30 seconds. I haven't seen or heard any leaks. I'm going to continue to hold for one minute. Haven't seen the gauge move or heard any indications of a leak. We have 10 more seconds. All right, I didn't see or hear a leak. That's been one minute. Now I'm looking for a low air warning indicator. It's gonna be a light and or buzzer, and it must go off before it drops below 55 PSI. May go off before that, but it has to go off before it drops below 55 PSI. So we're just gonna make it happen. Start pumping your brakes down, watching your gauge, watching for your indicators. These gauge has a delay in it since it's electric. All right, we're at about 66 and nothing yet. All right, our primary just gave it to us right around 60. We need to get it on the other one. All right, we do have low air indicators. Now I'm gonna continue to fan the brakes and somewhere around 40, both of these put buttons are gonna pop out. So now all you really care about is making sure both these buttons pop out. So don't watch the gauge, watch the buttons. You'd hate for one of them to pop out and the other one not. They both popped out and they both popped out around 30, 35. So somewhere between 20 and 40, these buttons will pop out. All right, now at this point, you can crank it back up, get your air building again. And now's where you would ask the examiner with their assistance, could they help you check the lights outside of the vehicle? You're gonna have to tell them where to go and what lights you're having them check. You need to check every light on this vehicle. If you don't check every light on the outside of this vehicle, you will not get credit for your light check, okay? So when you're done, the examiner can't end your test. You have to tell them you're done with your exam. So this completes my exam, I'm finished.